Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist, Manesh Gurren here. In case you're new to this channel, I'm your tour guide into the complex and fascinating world of psychedelic research. Today's topic, how to best avoid quote unquote bad trips. In this video, I'm gonna first describe how we might understand what exactly a bad trip is and how researchers and therapists distinguish it from a challenging trip. And then I'll review the research on what factors can make you more likely to have a bad trip and how you can best protect yourself against that happening. But real quick, before that, let me share a few words on the sponsor of today's video, Psydel. Psydels are digital collectibles that let users create their own custom trips and also give them access to a suite of utilities for people interested in psychedelics. Go check out their website, Psydel com to learn more. Big thanks to Seidel. So the possibility of a bad trip is the most feared aspect of psychedelic effects. Many of us have heard horror stories from friends or have seen clips on social media or may have even experienced one or more bad trips ourselves. There are experiences where we feel like we've lost control of our thinking and sink deep into feelings of panic and anxiety, which can be some of the most intensely negative experiences of our lives. The ability for psychedelics to send us either into these hell realms or into the blissful abodes of mystical oneness or sometimes both over the course of a single trip, has been acknowledged since the beginning of the modern world's encounter with psychedelics. In fact, when coining the word psychedelic, the psychiatrist and pioneering psychedelic researcher Humphrey Osmond couched the term in the following line, to fathom hell or soar angelic, just take a pinch of a psychedelic. More recently, researchers at Johns Hopkins University conducted a large-scale survey study to identify the different components that constitute bad or challenging trips and also develop a questionnaire to measure them. The results of their study revealed seven main components that can happen to varying degrees in a psychedelic trip. And these are, number one, fear. This one's pretty self-explanatory and includes feelings of anxiety, panic, and the sense that something horrible is about to happen. Number two, physical distress. This includes experiences such as a heightened awareness of one's heartbeat and the feeling that it might be skipping beats or an internal feeling of shakiness and trembling or feelings of pressure or heaviness in the chest. Number three, insanity, which is just the feeling that you might lose your mind or go completely insane. Number four, death. This is the feeling that you're dead, dying, or just watching yourself die. Number five, paranoia. The feeling that others are plotting against you and that everyone else is in on something that you're not. Kind of like Truman Show vibes. Number six, grief. This includes feelings of sadness, grief, and despair. And lastly, number seven is isolation, which is the feeling that you're completely isolated from everyone else and is completely and utterly alone. Yeah, these don't really seem to be too pleasant, do they? It's important to emphasize that in terms of the research studies and clinical trials, when there's a lot of care taken to ensure a good set and setting. These types of experiences don't usually occur to a strong degree and are pretty short lasting if they do. But I do want to point out here is that it's extremely important that psychedelics are approached with proper preparation and respect. Otherwise, they can really kick your ass. And for tips on optimizing your own or your client's set and setting, be sure to check out my video entitled How to Prepare for a Psychedelic Trip. Something fascinating about bad trips is that people often actually benefit from them when the difficulties are resolved and sufficiently psychologically integrated. In fact, a survey study that complemented the one I just talked about found that 84% of just under 2,000 people who were talking about their worst trip ever said that despite the difficulties, they feel like they benefited from the experience. That said, the story is complicated because this study also found that when the bad trip portion of an experience was longer in duration and when the individual did not have physical comfort or social support during the experience, it was more likely to have a negative effect on their well-being afterwards. So you may be asking the question, well, what's the difference between a challenging trip and a bad trip? Well, a challenging trip could be understood as an intense and difficult trip that serves as a valuable learning experience. As I was kind of saying before, when you're able to make sense of, psychologically integrate, and get meaningful insights from a bad trip, it's often described more as a challenging one, which suggests that there's still the possibility of a positive lasting impact. In contrast, a bad trip is a negative trip along the the lines described above that you're not able to psychologically integrate and that results in some kind of psychological harm. And this definitely does happen for people who are not doing it with the proper preparation. With proper care for set and setting and with proper support, most if not all bad trips can be transmuted into challenging trips. But without these things, you're just playing with fire. You've been warned. All right, now that we know what bad trips are and how they're distinct from challenging trips, let's summarize and clearly lay out some research-backed factors that make bad trips
trips more likely, and also some practical tips on how to address them. Number one, high dose. Multiple studies have found that taking a higher dose increases the likelihood of having a bad trip. Nothing surprising there. Always know how much you're taking, measure your mushrooms, don't just take a handful, and always err on the lower side if you're unsure how much you should take. You can always take more later, but you can't take less later. Number two, an absence of physical comfort. Being in a setting where you don't feel physically comfortable or safe increases your likelihood of having a bad trip. So make sure you at the very least have a calm and safe space to retreat to if you need it. Number three, an absence of social support during the experience. This is also an obvious one. You wanna make sure that you're around people that you trust and that have your back in case shit hits the fan. Having others there who will compassionately reassure you and help you ground yourself can make all of the difference. Number four, taking the drug in a large large and highly stimulating environment, such as a festival or rave. Psychedelics intensify whatever it is you're doing. So if you're already in a stimulating and dynamic environment with lots of people around you doing all sorts of things, it's easy to slip into a state of being overwhelmed. And that experience of overwhelm can then lead you to panic and potentially lead you to go off the rails. Know your environment and know how it might make you feel and make your decisions accordingly. Number five, being inexperienced. A study found that 70% of participants' worst trip was either their first time ever taking a psychedelic or when they were very inexperienced. If you're new to psychedelic effects, be extra careful, especially if you're doing it in a more open and uncontrolled environment. Number six, having an ungrounded, apprehensive, and or distracted headspace when going into the experience. Studies have found that if you're really apprehensive and fearful of the experience and really mentally preoccupied with worries and concerns either from your day or about the experience itself, then you're more likely to venture into bad trip territory and experience more anxiety. Ideally, when you're going into a psychedelic experience, you wanna be in a state of grounded openness and curiosity and have an ability to let go of previous concerns and fully surrender and immerse yourself in the experience. This is a core part of set, of the set and setting of psychedelic therapy. Now, the last thing I wanna say here, which is less scientific but no less real, is trust your intuition. What does your gut tell you? Like, really listen to it, even if it gives you an answer you don't wanna hear. If it's telling you that it's a bad idea and you feel a pit of anxiety around taking a psychedelic, strongly reconsider doing it. Most likely that experience of anxiety, those feelings in your body, aren't just gonna magically disappear, they might get amplified. The difficulty here, of course, is distinguishing between the healthy anxiety of going into an intense experience versus the fearful anxiety telling you that this is a bad idea. It's on you to try to sort that out within yourself or with a trusted friend. All right, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you could share it with other people. I really think this kind of harm reduction education is so important and we really need to get it out there on a larger scale and if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button smash the like button and ring the little notification bell to stay tuned for future videos and as always feel free to drop a comment down below about any questions or criticisms you have about what I discussed today if you think I missed something please let me know and with that this is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist Manesh Gurren signing off until next time